Hi all, welcome to the PlatformCon 2022 Culture Track on Designing Platform Organizations. My name is Andrew Fong, I'm currently the CEO of a early stage startup focused in the production platform space. Previously I was CTO at Vise, I was VP of Infrastructure at Dropbox, where I spent over nine years um, in just about every infrastructure and platform role. And prior to that, I was, at, I was ex YouTube infrastructure, um, part of Google and AOL um, back in the early 2000s. I have over 20 plus years of infrastructure and platform experience. So, as I said, Pradvana exists to get you to simplicity and consistency in production. Um, this area is a very, uh, this space is super important to me personally, and I really think there's a lot of opportunity in the platform and infrastructure space that still exists today. How to think about this talk. This is not a blueprint or a history lesson, and I really hope that there's a lot of conversation in the platform con Slack channel as we go through this talk. Um, it's gonna be about principles and it happens behind the scenes in organizational planning. Things that we all may not know happens if we're an engineer or on the manager side, just a different way of thinking about things and how to communicate back to our engineering teams about platform organizations. I really hope that we can create some empathy in this talk. I think that this is a very big, um, part of building organizations and having a platform team and so it all starts with empathy and I think that empathy of uh, just how we work together as platform orgs is also very important and just really cascades into the rest of the uh, rest of your organizations and companies at large. So before we jump into my part of the talk, let's look at some of the experts and how they've thought about organizations. Steven Sanofsky of Microsoft, the golden rule of reorgs, know the problem you're solving. This is always the case, know the problem you're solving before you go and try to solve something. Um, so I think it's a good starting point. Conway, any organization that designs a system designs defined broadly will produce a design whose structure is a copy of the organization's communication structure. Meaning, if you have an org chart and you have a team per API, you will have a system of APIs that look exactly like the teams. So however your org chart looks like, that's what your APIs are gonna look like or your stack is gonna look like. Ben Horowitz, perhaps the CEO's most important operational responsibility is designing and implementing the communication architecture for her company. Same principle as Conway. At the end of the day, organizational structures are about communication and people. Not, nothing is more important when you're thinking about platform organizations, which are a cross-cutting substrate of most companies. This is about technology, not about technology, this is about people and communication. Platforms are a solution to a problem, but they are not the, but they're not the why. And keep in mind, as the previous um, quotes indicate, this is a systems problem. And most people in this room, I would say, identify themselves as systems people. So let's apply the same principles and rigor that we do when we solve systems problems to organizational design. So with that in mind, my process. I like to understand the business goal first. This is why we exist. This is the start with the why. Um, so why do we need a platform organization before we even say we're going to have a platform organization? We want to understand the business problem at hand, um, and we want to get alignment around that. Then we want to write tests about our, our organization. This is the litmus test. These are litmus tests. How do we how do we think about the outcomes that we're going to achieve based on the organizational structure we build? Then we think about the principles um, that we're going to use. This is the how, how we're going to structure the building blocks. Um, this goes back to what uh, both Horowitz and Conway were saying. Uh, how do you want to manage the communication structures? Then we want to think about the org chart without people, and we want to run tests through that org chart. This is the systems problem again. We use that as a way to figuring out exactly where the, where the bugs are. Then we fill in names. And this is where you layer the people on, it's the management portion of it, how do we uh, allocate people to roles, and then we communicate it using the principles, very important, using the principles that we've outlined, not, um, and the business problem, not going through sort of like, we pulled this out of thin air and this is how it's going to be. Um, but the communication really has to start with the why and then the principles. So let's jump into problem statements and test. First question, why do you want a platform organization? I think it's a very important question to have. There's a lot of ways you can design and organize yourselves, but really you need to understand the business problem. Is the business problem about repeatability across the organization? Is it about reliability across the organization? Meaning, do we want to get our number of nines up and we think that there's a cross-cutting solution for this? Is it about product velocity? Do we have too many silos and they can't work together well because of the communication structures that have been built and so now we're denormalizing this? Is it about tech debt? Do we just need to have a team that's focused on pulling out the underlying uh, pieces and rebuilding them so into a more solid foundation? Is it about cost? 
Are we looking to find efficiencies across the organization from a cost perspective? Whether it's about um, things like cluster management or people costs, um, what are the levers that are being pulled there? Like, why are we doing this about cost? In my previous life, this was about cost, reliability, and velocity all at the same time and balancing these, these across each other. And so for the rest of this talk, we'll use this framing. We're at cost, reliability, and velocity. So that gets us to the tests. Okay, so now we've decided the problem, cost, reliability, um, and product velocity. Let's look at key projects and processes, past, present, and future, that play into those. Let's outline what they're gonna be for the optimal outcome, and let's set these aside for testing our org chart. The litmus tests that we used in previous lives were around migrations of any type. I've seen a lot of conversations in the platform, uh, platform engineering Slack channels around migrations. How does product interface with this? And that's gonna be the primary key that we're gonna talk about for the rest of this talk. New hardware introduction. Um, this could be EC2 instances or any type of cloud platform as well. For, for me in previous lives, this was really about physical hardware. Um, what is, how does compliance and security interface with the environments? What's the reliability interface? Let's not just limit reliability to be about what's the product reliability, but really it's, it goes all the way to MPS scores for your companies. How does, how does platform play into that? How do we build that interface for the rest of the organization? And then cost. You know, for us, it was there's a large cost component about uh, gross margins, and so we really had to have a supply and demand problem statement that, uh, that an organization focused on that as well. So the interface between product, infrastructure, and finance were very important to us. Let's tackle the product interface, though. Um, because I think that's probably the most interesting and most important um, reason that uh, platform organizations exist. And so let's talk about the principles now that we use to design this organization as we're going to look at the platform interface against those, or sorry, the product interface against those principles. And principles are your North Star. These sit on top of your mission and values, but these are the North Star for designing the organization, um, and this is the reasons why you have made decisions. And so these, everything should ladder back up to these. You should be able to defend the organizational structure to any engineer or any executive or any team member at any point in time using these principles. So the principles that I use when thinking about platform organizations in the past have been workflow aligned, not stack or API aligned. Um, this means zero to one touch points. This is not about having 50 APIs and 50 teams that you have to go talk to to build, put something together as a product person. If I think about the job to be done as a product engineer, it is not about doing that. The job to be done is iterate quickly and ship. That is it. It's about putting 100% of your cognitive energy towards the product development process, not understanding all the various pieces that infrastructure or platform wants you to understand. So this is about workflows, zero to one touch points either self-service or talk to one team and one team only to get your work job done. Autonomy and ownership. Um, we really wanted to make sure the engineering teams inside of infrastructure had the ownership and autonomy to move independently um, within the inter in, inside the organization themselves and had single metrics to be, um, to be gold against. And we wanted to optimize for top talent. Best people on biggest problems. Okay, so let's take these principles. Let's put this onto an org chart. This is a super simple org chart, or maybe super simple. Um, it's basically the way my organization looked um, when I was running infrastructure. I had five top level teams, production services, which is really about development, deployments, and things like that. Technical infrastructure, underlying substrate, cloud, data centers, networks, physical things. Strategy and operations. This is the internal planning and sort of cycles management of infrastructure themselves, cross-cutting across infrastructure. Storage services. For Dropbox, it's super important. We had you know multi exabytes of storage, so it's a very t important top level thing that the company cared about in terms of durability, data retention, etc. Policy uh, and reliability. This is the interface for how does the rest of the company think about disaster recovery, reliability, tooling. It is not the team fixing everything. It is the team putting frameworks in place to hold the rest of the organization accountable. Okay, now let's validate this work chart with the talk as we talked about um, as we talked about earlier with uh, new products. So new product interface, which part of the org will be the interface, how many touch points, these are all questions you need to ask when you look at that previous org chart. Do, does the product team need to talk to any of these other teams on a regular basis? Say like nine out of 10 times they go, should go to one team and one team only. So let's take the question, how many touch points will the product team need to build X, where X is a new product feature or a new product line that they're launching um, that's built on our standard technology stack? Okay, so what is the workflow the developer does? Well, they develop, they deploy, and operate. 
And where do they spend most of their time? Really on development, not really on deploy and operate. Um, so we really don't want to take those second two areas of deployment and operate and force them to find other people to talk to. Because if we do, that's outside of their normal lines of business. So typically on a day-to-day -day basis, 90, 95, 100% hopefully of their time is on development and understanding the new features and the customer and maximizing all of their attention towards that problem. This is super important that we as platform people understand is that their job is not to deploy and their job is not to operate. Their job is not to put things together. Their job is to ship product. And so we want to make sure that they're spending their time thinking about that and not navigating the platform's APIs, the platform's org chart. Okay, so the way we thought about this is production services is that interface. This gives them the full life cycle of their job to be done. Everything that a product engineer needs to do should mostly be contained inside of that organization with a single leader that can interface with the product engineering leadership as well as PMs. So if you think about this, if we zoom in on this org chart to, to directly, we think about that workflow of develop, deploy, and operate. Okay, so production services, it owns deployments. This is the CD system. Development infrastructure, it owns the build tools. It owns the testing infrastructure. It owns the frameworks um, that, uh, basically the early cycles, code review. All of that is contained within those first two boxes, deployments and development infrastructure, CI, CD. Then we go to the next layer. Okay, SOA and serverless. What is the frameworks in which you're building technology? So is it a serverless stack? Is it a uh, normal service-oriented architecture? Uh, we've supported both, and this was the underlying product platform, the platform, um, the internal pieces that were specific just to our organization that needed to be built. Um, and so you, know, you come into this team, you have a senior director or VP director, um, that person owns all of this, and they also own observability. This is like how you operate and understand it. So now the whole life cycle, Everything you need to do is contained within this one pillar of infrastructure. You never had to jump to the technical infrastructure or the storage stack or any of those. Um, and we believe that this provides a much better experience because one person has to build empathy now with the rest of the organization as opposed to n number of relationships. And then we end up with a fractured uh, communication structure. So now we've got a very workflow aligned system here. And then we loop and refine that. Had we been in a situation where 50% of the time we thought that the product organization would have to talk to technical infrastructure to get a new EC2 instance type, well, then maybe we would have thought about it differently. But in this case, production services own the interface back to technical infrastructure to get new EC2 instances, so we hid that behind an abstraction called production services for the rest of the organization. Okay, so now we've got our org chart. Let's think about the people side. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because I think this is much more of a management talk track and you can spend a lot of time on how to figure out who the best people are for, for various roles. But from a principled perspective, I think about it as optimizing for top talent. Put your biggest, best people on your biggest opportunities, not the other way around. You don't wanna think about, okay, I don't wanna move people around because I have a big opportunity, but this person's working on this and they're great and I don't wanna disrupt them. You need to make sure they understand the why. Have them understand exactly why you're making these organizational changes and they will fall into those roles naturally because typically the best people on the best, biggest opportunities, that's where they want to be. Then leave gaps in the org chart when you clearly don't have the right person for the role. If you don't have the right senior leader for the role, don't put a senior leader in that has to interface with the product teams on a regular basis if that person's too junior. Because if you do that, you will erode organizational trust. And over time, that will cost you. That will cost you the credibility to actually move quickly when you need to have something done or need to have a migration done. Um, and so I think this is actually a really important part for most platform orgs to think about is sometimes you don't have the right person that has the right communication skills. Don't give them that job, don't hire them, don't put them in that role if there's a cross-cutting responsibility. And then have real conversations with people where they are and what the role you need them to play is. If you need them to be much better at cross-cutting communication, have that conversation and hold them to that and make sure they're accountable to that. And then when you communicate this, communicate your principles, own the message, and involve senior leaders in management early, in engineering early. Uh, this will help the teams feel and understand. Um, most of the time engineers understand why platform organizations need to exist, but it's not necessarily clear why they need to exist from a management perspective. Um, so focus on, the, uh, uh, focus on that early, get that alignment early, understand the business problems that most of the other leadership teams are trying to solve, and then align your platform organization to that. And in the end, remember, the org chart is a tool. 
It is something that we use to accomplish a business objective. It is not something that we should be beholden to and unable to be flexible about. Um, it is simply that a tool. So I hope that this kind of gives you all a little bit more of what happens behind the scenes of when organizational design happens um, and some food for thought about how you would want to take and design your own platform organizations. Thank you all.